الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان صدق الله العظيم The ayahs of the Quran that I have just recited to you are the first four ayahs of Surah Al-Rahman. Last time when I was here, we spoke about the knowledge, the importance of knowledge, the importance of the person who seeks knowledge and the importance of the person who delivers knowledge. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when created this being, the human being, right at the core gave knowledge. And it was the knowledge that distinguishes us from the rest of the beings. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again talks about that idea in this surah and says, Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, the most beneficent, the unconditional giver, the giver to those who believe in Him and the giver to those who do not believe in Him. The giver. He decided to have His mercy on you. So what did he do? عَلَّمَ Quran. He taught you his book so that you can be guided. And when you are guided, you're going to make good choices. When you make good choices, you're going to make right decisions and moving on, you will going to be going on the path which is called Surat Al-Mustaqeem which leads to Jannah. Which leads to the maqfirah, the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which leads to his mercy. So, عَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنِ خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانِ Now here if you look at the beauty of the Arabic language, the sequence have been reversed. Generally speaking, you would say, He created the man and then taught him the book. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, I taught him the book and I created him. We'll go some other day. This will going to take a lot of time to understand the linguistics of the Qur'an. It's beautiful. But just so that, I just wanted to bring to your attention in case if you are a reader, go back and read about it. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I created you. And then, I taught you on top of reading, I taught you how to express yourself. That's extremely important in learning process to be able to express yourself. As a student, I should be able to express myself by answering, asking a question that can make sense so that the other person can respond to it in a fashion that can make sense. So it's extremely important to be expressive. Now there are people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may cure everybody, run into different kind of diseases like dyslexia or other kind of medical problems or go through some kind of learning disabilities. So, scientists, educationists, researchers have come up with different ways so that these people who may be blind, who may be deaf, who have other kind of physical and mental issues can also learn. So that they can become somewhat self-sufficient. So this is one human being, intelligent human being, helping out the other human being to bring him or her up to the pace. And being able to express his or her knowledge in a fashion of research and development so that the other people can benefit. This all encompass in the meaning of عَلَّمَهُ bayan. I taught him how to express. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given many ways for us to express ourselves. There are words, there is a body language too. That's also a form of expression. So it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us different ways to express ourselves. And then the ayah of the Qur'an which I spoke about to you last time when the Prophet was sent to the people, the Prophets are given the book so that they can teach. So they're teachers. So there are the teachers and the best of the best teachers. Because they teach us 
from inside out. Their teaching doesn't stay here. Their teaching goes deep-rooted. Their teaching changes generations. Their teachings doesn't affect an individual or a household. So they're the best of the best teachers. Blessed teachers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we spoke about the importance. And then we spoke about the teachers and the religious teachers in particular. So people ask this question that how can I identify who is a good religious teacher? How do we figure out that who is a better teacher? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lays the foundation in the Quran. And He says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ If the person is a person of knowledge, then that knowledge must be applied knowledge. And when the person applies the knowledge, you could see the applications. So these are the people that with their ilm, with their knowledge, they apply it, and you could see the application. They're living examples of the knowledge that they teach, and their applications have one core, and which is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the true ulama. Going through many books may give us a certificate in this world to survive. But in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Among the people, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء This is the core. So a person with knowledge has a lot more burden than the person with lesser or no knowledge. Because the person in order to preach and teach must have to first apply the knowledge on him or herself. And then at the same time, the shaitan has a greater attack on us. And what happens when a shaitan attacks us, a person with the knowledge gets high on the knowledge and starts thinking high of him or herself, that I'm somebody, I know, I'm better than others, I know more than others. So in order to, to calm such an attitude, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us some words in the Qur'an. So anytime in any field, I always use this all the time. You must always, I would recommend, use it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yusuf, وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ On top of everybody who knows, there is somebody else who knows more. Subhanallah. We look around us and we see that. That every day something new comes out. And you're like, who could have thought of that? Yes, somebody did. So nobody knows it all. So even you are gaining knowledge, at the same time you have to keep a lid on it of humbleness. Now think about it when the adhan is called. All the words in the adhan, you have to repeat whatever the person is saying. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, you repeat it. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, you repeat it. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, you repeat it. La ilaha illallah, you repeat it. But when he says... Hayya ala salah, come to the prayers. And when he says, Hayya ala al falah, come to the success, you don't say the same thing back. You say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Why? What exactly does that mean? Let me give you a narration first and I'm going to tell you the meaning of it. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said to one of his companions, Ya Aba Dhar, Ala ukhbiruka, shouldn't I tell you about one of the treasures from the Jannah? He said, Bala Ya Rasulullah. Yes. He said, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. First of all, this is one of the treasures from the treasure of Jannah. What exactly does it mean? It means, I cannot do any good, and, if I, and I cannot protect myself from any bad. It only happens by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the core and the essence of humbleness. We may do good, billions of good deeds, but are we doing it? All the resources that we are using, they're ours. None of it's ours. It's all by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if I am not doing anything bad, is it my willpower? No, it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He protected me. 
That's exactly what I am responding back in the salah. Before I enter into the salah, that I'm entering in a humble fashion. I have no power to come and stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have no power to put myself on the straight path or refrain myself from bad deeds. It's all by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah is a very beautiful dhikr. You could do it even outside. You don't even have to say it only time a, a bad thing comes into your head. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when talks about Musa alayhi salam, now these are beautiful ayahs. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Musa alayhi salam, tell your people who are to solve a problem, a case, a murder case, to slaughter a cow. Take the piece of that cow and put it on the person who was murdered, will be raised back and will tell you the name of the guy who killed him. When Musa alayhi salam presented this idea to his people to do this, they said, أَأَتَّخِذُنَا huzua? Do you think we are fools, Moses? What kind of remedy is this? And Musa alayhi salam's response was, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ I want to come in the protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before I can be considered among the ignorance. So ignorance is never a blessing. Knowledge is a blessing. Application of the knowledge is even a greater blessing. Being steadfast on the application is even more greater blessing. And keeping yourself low and humble is even a greater blessing. A very simple example, and I'm going to call it out here, is look at the trees around you in your gardens in the summertime. It is only the trees that bear fruits that hang in low. The one that carry no weight, they're standing tall and benefit nobody. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ وَالْغَفُورُ رَحِيم